Memoirs of Beloved Mary, Mother of Jesus, heretofore unchronicled. Chapter 3, An Address by Beloved Mary, Mother of Jesus, January 19, 1954. On her service at inner levels of forming sacred heart for each incoming life stream, Immaculate Concept, Magnifying the Lord, Importance of Being a Conductor of Master's Light and Love. May the peace of God rest on you, beloved children. May the love of God and for God rise within your hearts until it becomes the predominant feeling in your consciousness, and you become aware of that divine presence in every cell and atom of your earnest selves. Well do I know your hearts. It seems but yesterday that you stood, pure white spirits, before me and presented to me the elemental substance which was to form your garments of flesh in the next embodiment. Each of you had been called before the Lords of Karma and given an opportunity to take a new incarnation, each one presenting those energies which were to form the envelope through which your soul might seek understanding and ultimate freedom. Since entering into the realms of eternal light, it has been my privilege to assist in the creation of the chalice, the heart, which holds the sacred fire, around which is drawn the elemental substance of the flesh form. Within this chalice burns the fire of immortality. In each 12-month cycle, every life stream who is to incarnate upon the earth within that period enters my aura. Together we fashion the physical heart which will enshrine the sacred fire of life throughout the entire lifespan. Therefore, when I enter a room and welcome the hearts, souls, and spirits of those present, I take great delight in looking upon my own handiwork. I rejoice as the flame within that sacred heart begins to expand, dissolving the shadows, and one day bursting forth in a great transfiguration of the self into the presence. It is through this process of using the sacred fire that the base substance through divine alchemy is drawn into divine purity. This is the same method by which every life stream who has ascended entered into the full use of the immortal electronic garment, the seamless robe of eternity. While we have the great opportunity of holding the attention of mankind through this year upon our presence and our service to life, I shall endeavor to convey to the students as well as those who visit with me in the Resurrection Temple or in any one of the retreats or sanctuaries where my focus and flame abide, the consciousness of the Immaculate Conception. This consciousness I developed through century after century of dedication of my spirit and self-conscious loyalty to God. When the beloved Jesus was a very small boy, he already manifested this purity of spirit. He was born with a natural beauty of consciousness. He had no karma. There was not a stain on his soul nor one flaw within his thoughts and feelings that would contaminate the perfect expression of his mind, his body, or his spirit. Pure and perfect as Jesus was, he had the use of the faculties of the senses more highly developed than any child born of woman. He had perfect sight, perfect hearing, perfect taste, touch, and smell. Besides this, he had a great sensitive intuition to spiritual things. Jesus was like a beautiful, delicate instrument made to contact the vibratory action not only of the physical world, but the higher spheres as well. This exquisitely developed life stream was naturally capable of drawing the appearance world into himself with greater impact by the very clarity of his senses 
much more so than the dense and dull consciousness that perceives little and exists rather than lives. Along with every man and woman on earth, Jesus had the gift of free will, into which even I, by cosmic law, was not permitted to intrude through the pressure of my desire for his freedom. It was my great privilege to help that consciousness to use those faculties to magnify the God of light and the perfection of the Father whom he had vowed to represent to the race. Think on this for a moment. Jesus did not live in a charmed world. We lived in a small, humble village, and he was called upon to rub shoulders with the lame, the halt, and the sick, with the diseased of mind and body. In the day when we walked the earth, there were no institutions to close around those desolate forms which today are not apparent to the masses. This beautiful and delicate-minded boy, dressed in his simple little white tunic, the sandals that Joseph made for him upon his feet, was exposed to every thought on every plane with only our love to clothe him round. It was then that I said to him, Son, your soul has the power to magnify anything that you choose to accept as real. You may magnify an appearance of illness and distress, or you may magnify the Lord of life. Then I tried to show him the simple principles which I shall present night after night in our resurrection temple, while it is active during this 30-day period, and which I intend to give to the students at every opportunity I have to speak to them throughout the year. Jesus has said that it helped him so much to deliberately magnify the Lord instead of appearances. And I tell you that it saved my sanity many times throughout that embodiment. St. Germain, as Joseph, often blessed that principle also. It helped me to go through the initiations that I hope no other unascended being will ever be called upon to take. Therefore, I guarantee that it will help your individual souls through every experience you may have. Beloved ones, your souls are magnets. From your soul flows your life. That with which your attention connects, your soul does magnify. It is a mathematical and scientific principle which none can escape, be they initiates, chilas, or laymen. You may magnify good or evil. When your attention connects with any appearance, your life flows from your own heartbeat into it, and it grows, magnifying in your own consciousness, both in the appearance world and in the inner realms, wherever that soul abides. Now you may either magnify the shadows and distresses of the appearance world, or you may magnify the power of God by turning the beam of your energy and attention to that holy Christ self. Hold your attention there, dedicating it to receiving and magnifying its powers and qualities until your inner self grows in confidence, grows in beauty, and grows in perfection and imitation of that one. We made a game of it when Jesus was young. As children do, he would come with bruises on his feet or on his knees. All the various appearances that affect small growing boys. And I would say, we shall not magnify that hurt or that scar. We shall magnify our Lord. Then turning our attention to that perfect pattern, the three of us would draw the healing and peace of that presence through our beings until the appearance of imperfection would disappear. We did this systematically. We did it daily. Together we gathered a momentum that I, within myself, knew was building a positive power of resistance in the consciousness of Jesus against every appearance of evil, so that when his cosmic moment came upon him, he could even look at death itself and refuse to magnify it by the power of one heartbeat. Thus he turned all the power of his energy to life, magnifying the power of that life through him until death itself was vanquished. Do you see? It should be the same with you, dear hearts. We have watched the family life of mankind, and I have watched the mothers and the fathers of the race. 
I have seen them in their great sincerity, with their great sense of personal responsibility, and their earnest desire to surround their individual flock with security and protection. Yet through that very sincerity, they magnify the appearance of distress. Instead, they should magnify the all-power of the presence until the energy of the upreaching consciousness would conduct the substance of healing, supply, and protection into the world of form. I have said within myself, when opportunity presents itself, I shall make the Magnificat the creed of the conscious chivas. They shall accede as I did to that principle of truth that stood within my world until they are free. O oh, sons of heaven, daughters of heaven, why magnify the appearance world? Together let us magnify the powers of the Lord. Thank you for accepting the feeling of this, dear heart friends. As I witness the coming of the masters into the consciousness of the earnest students, bringing their gifts of light, their vision of things to come, and then I see the distress of the personal self of those earnest ones, the limitations and the shadows of the soul, my heart is near to bursting with the desire to convey to you how simple it is to connect with the Christ self. It is done by just turning your attention, your spirit and your senses to the ever-present God within your heart, allowing your energies to bask in that uplifting, healing, omnipresent consciousness of all good, feeling the flame of your own heart like an unfolding lotus, conducting those God-qualified energies into the world of form. All of the great men and women who have performed the seeming miracles of the ages have been merely conductors. My beloved Jesus was merely a conductor who connected the energies of his physical and inner bodies with his Father Mother God. He had such perfect trust in God that no outer appearance could ever draw an electron from his feeling world or cause him to magnify it. That was his tremendous accomplishment the feeling of which he has offered to give to any individual who cares to accept it. His feeling carries his power of accomplishment. I was present in Cana, where Jesus performed his first so-called miracle. There he just turned his attention to the Father of all good and allowed the energies of his own inner bodies to change the substance of that water into electronic light the people unconsciously qualifying it with that which they desired to manifest, which was wine. It is one of the simplest activities, just a letting go of the limited outer self and connecting inwardly with the presence of God, allowing his power of healing, of supply, or of peace to flow into the manifestation. Blessed ones, this should be a year of tremendous importance to you. Even if a handful of you can grasp the significance of this law, if you can work it out in some simple manifestation, feeling the power of your own energies connecting with the power of the Christ Self, you will truly be ourselves in action. You move around in the world of form, and your senses have been in the habit of bringing to your consciousness reports of good and evil. Won't you now try to change that? by accepting only the good? Will you try to remember me as you go about your daily work and let us see what you will magnify in the course of each day? It is a happy training and a pleasant pastime. You know yourself, even in your human activities, how grateful you are when friends do not magnify your weaknesses and how grateful is the soul when there is even one who magnifies your service your capacities, and your capabilities. That is what we do constantly. You know some of the students are unduly concerned when we commend individuals for accomplishment. Judging from human standards, they question the wisdom of our commendation. But we are magnifying the good, while the limited outer consciousness of the student magnifies the appearance. If we had not magnified the good, the human race would have passed into the second death long ago. 
There is not a member of the spiritual hierarchy who ever took human embodiment who would have been able to get home God free if some other soul had not chosen to stand by and magnify the good within that incarnated spirit. Someone held the faith, held the confidence, held the trust, while the individual engaged in cosmic service endeavored to fulfill his mission. May every God presence now individualized choose to magnify the good in each other. When that is done, we shall have a universal heart and a body, a soul, and a spirit made up of every life stream belonging to the Father-Mother God that will truly embody the nature of the cosmic Christ. To your hearts, to your families, to your loved ones, I direct the energy of the flame of my presence for your beautiful hospitality and for your exquisite remembrance of me in your daily life. Your devotion draws us closer and closer and gives us opportunity without limit to bless you individually and collectively. For myself, I shall magnify the light in your hearts, for I believe in you. You know I help to create those hearts, and I shall see you God-free. I bless you and thank you. Now I shall say good evening. I am the Immaculate Conception.